Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be doing an NCLEX review over pneumothorax. This video is part of an NCLEX review series over the respiratory system. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be talking about the patho, the different types of pneumothorax, the signs and symptoms, and the nursing interventions. And I highly recommend that after you watch this video, you also check out my video on chest tube care because chest tubes and pneumothorax go hand in hand so you can learn those nursing interventions. And a card should be popping up so you can access that video after you watch this. And as always, over here on the side and in the description below, you can access the quiz and the notes. So let's get started. First, let's start out talking about what is a pneumothorax? What is the definition of it? Well, in a nutshell, what it is, is it's the collapsing of a lung due to air accumulating in the pleural space which the pleural space is the space between the visceral and the parietal pleura. And it's also called the intrapleural space. Now, before we dive into our patho, signs and symptoms of nursing interventions, let me go over some key points with you so you can remember and keep these in the back of your mind as we're discussing this stuff. Okay, a pneumothorax can be partial or total um, collapsing of a lung, and it usually affects one lung. Causes of pneumothorax include, it can happen spontaneously without any warning. It can be caused by trauma to the chest, like blunt trauma or a penetrating trauma. For instance, if a patient was in a car wreck, that airbag hitting the chest can cause it, or CPR, or um, a gunshot wound or a stabbing can cause air to go into that space. Other things, lung disease, a medical procedure like a central line placement. A lot of times after a patient has a central line place, like say in a PIC line, the, uh, you'll need to get a chest x-ray to make sure um, there isn't a pneumothorax and everything's good. Or mechanical ventilation with um, positive end expiratory pressure where um, barotrauma can happen. And we'll really be talking about this with tension pneumothorax. And how are pneumothorax, how is it diagnosed? It's diagnosed usually with a chest x-ray, an ultrasound, or a CT scan. Small pneumothorax, you can have small, large, they vary in size. Small ones tend to resolve on their own without treatment. However, if it's large, um, they will need treatment like a chest tube placement, which will help drain that air out of the intrapleural space, or needle decompression, where they stick a needle into that space and um, aspirate the air. And um, again, we'll really be hitting on that with the tension pneumothorax, which is a medical emergency, and that is one of the treatments for it. Now let's look at the pathophysiology of a pneumothorax. But first, let's look at our lung anatomy because it goes hand in hand. Okay, here you have some lungs, and what you see in red is the chest wall. And attached to the chest wall is your parietal pleura. And then you have in the white areas, that is the intrapleural space. And then next, the green is your visceral pleura, which attaches to the lung. And what happens in this intrapleural space, you have small amounts of serous fluid. So as you breathe in and breathe out, that fluid allows your lungs to glide over one another without any pain, and it creates a negative pressure. And your lungs love negative pressure. If anything is added into this space, like with the pneumothorax, your lungs collapse. They do not like that. So they thrive on negative pressure. And this negative pressure acts like suction to keep your lungs inflated. So in order to keep your lungs inflated, you need that negative pressure. Now, when air enters into this space, it can happen again through like an object piercing through this chest wall, we'll, we would get an open pneumothorax, and all the air from outside is entering into this space, causing pressure to push on that lung and collapse it, or um, a layer, the visceral pleura, ruptures. And whenever it ruptures, it releases air that you're breathing in into that intrapleural space, which that is like a closed pneumothorax. Or, barotrauma, like with mechanical ventilation. That can happen as well. Now, as this air builds in this space, what happens is that it decreases the ability of the lungs to recoil on that affected side. So what happens is that lung gets pushed away from that chest wall 
and it leads to collapse. And remember, your lungs like negative pressure, so they don't have that, you're gonna have some major problems. Now let's talk about the different types of pneumothorax. What I'm gonna hit on is things you need to know for your nursing lecture exam and NCLEX, because they ask about specific um, types of pneumothorax, like spontaneous, open, uh, close, or attention. So let me go over those with you. First, let's talk about closed pneumothorax. What is this? This is where air leaks into the intrapleural space without an outside wound. So the key thing with this is that your chest wall, which is here in red, and your pleura are gonna remain intact. It's the opposite of what happens in an open pneumothorax, which we'll go over here in a second. So what can cause this? One thing that can cause this is a rib fracture. Say that the person falls down stairs and breaks the rib. You get a sharp bony prominence off of that broken rib. It goes in, it pierces through, tears through that viscera pleura of the lung, so you have a tear. And every time that person breathes in and breathes out, air is going to escape through that tear into this space, which should not happen. So what happens is that this space gets bigger and bigger as it just fills with air. Think about it like you're blowing up a balloon. As you blow into the balloon, it gets bigger and bigger. And so that's what's gonna happen. Because remember, your lungs like negative pressure. This is adding pressure to it. So it's gonna cause the lung to collapse. Another thing, another common cause of a closed pneumothorax is what's called a spontaneous pneumothorax. And this is where you have a defect in the alveolar wall and the visceral pleura. And this causes, what happens is that you develop a pulmonary bleb. And this is like a sac-like blister that develops on the visceral layer of the lungs. And um, what can happen is that this bleb can rupture. No warning sign, that's why it's really called spontaneous because there wasn't an injury that caused it, it just happened without warning. And that blister ruptures and it releases air into the intrapleural space. And these blebs can develop over time. Patients can have multiple, one, multiple blebs and um, they may not rupture immediately once they develop. However, um, some things that can increase a pulmonary bleb to rupture is like changes in air pressure if the patient um, changes maybe altitude or something like that. Or there is, or the patient takes a sudden deep breath or they smoke. Now, um, spontaneous pneumothorax is categorized by primary or secondary. And let me go over those with you real fast. Um, you can have a primary spontaneous pneumothorax, and this tends to occur in people with out lung disease. They tend to be young, less than the age of 30, and tall and thin. However, you can have a secondary pneumothorax, and this occurs in people with lung disease, like COPD, asthma, cystic fibrosis, things like that. Now let's look at open pneumothorax. What is this? This is where there is an opening in the chest wall that causes a passage between the outside air and the intrapleural space. So as you can see in this illustration here, you have the chest wall, which is in red, and you have your prada pleura. Let's say that this patient was stabbed. It's a big stab wound. And what it's done is it's allowing, it's create this opening to allow inhaled and exhaled air to pass back and forth. So your pleura space is getting all this air in and out. And as it passes in and out, you could hear a sucking sound. This um, open pneumothorax is sometimes referred to as a sucking chest wound because what's happening is that your body is shunting air through the chest wall instead of the trachea, which is what it does during normal circumstances when you don't have a big gaping wound on your chest. And it will create that sucking sound. And the intrapleural pressure, pressure will become equal with the outside pressure, which will lead to lung collapse because remember, your lungs thrive in negative pressure. Now, in class, NCLEX tip, thing you need to know about open pneumothorax. You may see it on your nursing lecture exams or the NCLEX. Okay, a nursing intervention. Say you have a patient come in, they have a big open wound, they have this. What are you going to do? Nursing intervention would be to place a sterile occlusive dressing and tape it on three sides, leaving the fourth side untaped because this is going to allow exhaled air to leave the opening but seal back over it when the patient's inhaling. 
Hence, it's gonna be, hence it's gonna help prevent a tension pneumothorax. So what is a tension pneumothorax? A tension pneumothorax happens when an opening to the interpolar space creates a one-way valve, which leads air to collect in that interpolar space, but it cannot escape. So it just keeps building and building and building. And this is a medical emergency. That patient needs treatment immediately. And a tension pneumothorax can happen um, as a complication of a pneumothorax, such as an open or close. So as you can see from this drawing here, pressure is just building and building and building. And as that pressure builds, this leads to increased thoracic pressure. And you get compression on that unaffected lung and the heart, which is not good. And you will get a mediastinum shift where your heart, your trachea, your esophagus and vessels are going to shift to that unaffected side. And this is gonna cause major compression on your other lung and decrease venous return because your vena cava is being compressed. So what's gonna happen? You're gonna see these certain signs and symptoms in this patient and I would remember this. What's gonna happen is the patient's gonna to try to compensate because they are air hungry, because they have limited amount of breathing room. So they're gonna become tachypenic. They're gonna to try to breathe and breathe, but it's not gonna work. They're gonna be hypoxic. Then um, they're gonna have compression on that vena cava, which drains the blood from your body to your heart to get reoxygenated. Well, what's gonna happen is that your heart's gonna become tachypenic, you're going, I mean tachycardic. You're going to increase your heart rate because it's noticing that you're not getting blood to all those organs and tissues that you need. But there's nothing to pump because of that compression on those great vessels. So you're gonna have tachycardic, they're gonna be tachycardic, but they're gonna have hypotension because it's gonna reduce your cardiac output. And pretty much your patient is going into shock. And the patient can also have jugular venous distension. Now a late sign of um, this is tracheal deviation. That's gonna happen late, later on whenever <laughs> things are really, really bad. So if you see that, not good, it's very late. Now, one thing I wanna to touch on, you need to watch patients who are on mechanical ventilation with PEEP, that positive end expiratory pressure, because they are at risk for developing this due to what's called barotrauma, which um, over time, all that pre extra pressure on that lungs is going to lead, up, lead to buildup of air in the interpleura space from rupture of the visceral pleura. Now, if this happens, they will need treatment that the physician will do, will be needle decompression. Well, they'll insert a needle in and aspirate that extra air that has built and help relieve all that tension that is going on. Now let's look at the major signs and symptoms that a patient could have when they have a pneumothorax. And to help you remember it, um, remember the pneumonic collapse because a pneumothorax is a collapsed lung. So um, each letter will correlate with the sign and symptom. Okay, C for chest pain. Patient may complain of chest pain all of a sudden that is sharp and could be worse on inspiration. Also, another C for cyanosis, just where they're not getting oxygenated good. You can see blue around the lips, the skin tone could turn a bluish color. Next, O for avert tachycardia and tachypenia. That is where the body is trying to compensate for that low oxygen level that's going on. The heart's trying to pump faster to get blood to the body because it has low oxygen level and the body's causing the respiratory system to increase in respiration so you can take more oxygen in. L for low blood pressure. The other L for low SpO2, if you have them on an SpO2 monitor, you may notice that it would be less than 90%. A for absent breath sounds on the affected side, if they have a collapsed lung, you're not gonna hear breath sounds on that side that has a collapsed lung compared to the other side. So you'd wanna compare the sides, see um, how they're sounding. Next, P for pushing of the trachea to the unaffected side. Remember that was in a tension pneumothorax. But remember, if your patient has a pneumothorax or a chest tube, they are at risk for a tension pneumothorax. So if you see that, um, it could be developing into that. But remember, that's a late sign. Next, S for sub-Q emphysema. This is where um, carbon dioxide can escape into the skin. So you may see these little bulging areas, maybe in the face, the neck, 
the lung, I mean the abdomen, and whenever you feel it, it's like a crunchy feeling to it. And this is known as sub-Q emphysema. Another S for sucking sound, and remember that was in the open pneumothorax where you have that passage through the chest wall that is allowing air to go in and out of the lungs through the opening of the chest. E for expand, expansion of the chest will be unequal. So wherever you have the collapsed lung, remember it's not inflating and deflating fully like compared to the healthy lung on the other side. So you'll have unequal chest rise and fall. And then D for dyspnea. Of course, they're gonna have difficulty breathing because they only probably have one lung that's working appropriately. Now let's look at the nursing interventions. What are you gonna do for this patient as the nurse who, have a, who has a pneumothorax? Um, you're gonna, of course, be monitoring the breath sounds. Um, what do they sound like on this side compared to the other side? And you're gonna be watching the rise and the fall of the chest. You're gonna be monitoring their vital signs, especially their blood pressure, their heart rate, their respiratory rate, and their oxygen saturation. Uh, assessing for that sub-Q emphysema. Administering oxygen as ordered by the physician. Um, it's best whenever a patient has a respiratory issue to keep them in uh, the head of the bed in Fowler's position to decrease that effort of breathing. And remember, whenever we talked about open pneumothorax, what you're gonna do with the dressing by um, using a sterile occlusive dressing, placing it over the opening, taping it on three sides, and leaving one side untaped so um, it'll allow the air to escape and prevent attention pneumothorax. And then another biggie is maintaining that chest tube drainage system if it is placed by the physician. And that's why I really recommend that you watch that video on chest tubes because it'll really help you understand how to care for them. But let me go over some highlights with you. Um, a patient with a pneumothorax, you would want to make sure while you're maintaining the drain that you're assessing for leaks in the system, the chest tube drain, drain system, and make sure it's working appropriately. How to troubleshoot it. A lot of NCLEX questions and nursing exam questions like to ask you, well, the drain came out, what are you gonna do? Or the system's broken, what do you wanna do? Because this stuff does happen in real life and they want you to be prepared for it. Next, um, with a pneumothorax, just from where we've talked about the anatomy and physio um, the pathophysiology of it, we're removing the chest tube is removing air from the interpolar space. So you may have intermittent bubbling in that water seal chamber as the air is escaping, but excessive bubbling in the water seal chamber represents a leak somewhere in your system. So you wanna investigate it and figure out where it is. Also, as the patient breathes in and breathes out, the water seal chamber will fluctuate up and down. However, um, a lot of questions like to ask you, you've noticed that it's quit fluctuating up and down in the water seal chamber. What could it be? Um, either it's a kink somewhere in the system or that lung has re-expanded. So you wanna assess those breath sounds and see what it sounds like. Okay, so that is about pneumothorax. Now go to my website, registernursorn.com and take the free review quiz. And be sure to check out the other videos in this series. And thank you so much for watching and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.